to close now our lesson, we also need something where we want to have a hole for the drinking. And I think it would be a good idea. Let's take a look here from the top to have it here somewhere in this area. And if you don't exactly know how to approach something like this, I really often start with real selections and then I think about how can I do it more procedural. Let's do it really fast here. I go to the selection tool. And one thing which is sometimes a little bit yeah, distracting is if you have a boolean or something like that, you sometimes see um, the other object still here in your viewport. To decouple that, a null object really often helps. So if you select a null object, you only see the topology of the whole thing. So, okay, let's start here really fast by playing. So I go to the select tool, I go to primitive select and I say I want to have, for example, in this area here, the drinking. So I make a group out of that. And this group here, I name opening. And this is not procedural at the moment because we selected it directly, but first try and then we take a look. Then I want to use here, let's go here with a nine key on your keyboard here into the group select, or you can select here. So I select opening here. It's really important that we have opening selected. If the colors are not really useful, like here, everything is green. You can go here and say, yeah, show me this here only in pink. Yeah, so you know, okay, it's really only that here. Now we want to use a poly extrude. For that, opening is selected. Great, I make a little bit of an insert, make it a little bit more like that. And then I make a division here because we know that we later have to hold this form here with the help of a subdivision surface. Now we can normally change now here points and so on, but I think a longer hole would be good. So again, poly extrude over the viewport. And now we have to make sure that we don't have these. We need opening again. And now we bring this down and make some divisions here. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look now how it looks if we activate here now the subdivision surface. And you see, I haven't made the most cleverest selection, but you see, yeah, it looks exactly what like we want to have it. So. Now we know how it works, what we have to do. So here we have our opening, then we have these two extrudes, one inner and one down. And so this here is now the problem that we selected directly here, only polygons. So can we make it more clever? Sure we can. So set here our group as the active one. Deselect that here because it was not the best idea. Then we go to bounding regions again. We take our B box expression again, 0 0.D underscore Y max. Okay, here's our box. And then we want to have a sphere here. And the sphere, I think it's a little bit too big, but first place it. So I select here the handle tool and move it here to the front where we want to have the middle. And we go here to the size and bring it down, 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 until we have the selection which I want to have. And if you have the problem that this polygon here is not completely selected, there's an option for this here, include partial contained polygons. This can help, but you also can use now here, um, this box here to try to make a better selection here. Okay, that's it. So this is the whole area. It's still named opening. We go here to the extrude and the extrude. And now you see that the tree works. And this here, where is opening, is the opening area. Click here, red. Or drag it, bring it over, and then this area is also done. Great. Can deactivate here this mode. Yeah, now we have to finish our cup. You remember that I've 
done something at the beginning which I haven't finished. You remember that we have here this lit down area here, which I want to connect to the rest. So how to do that? First thing, lit down doesn't need a front output. We only need this area here. Then it's looking in the wrong direction. We reverse the whole thing. Now it looks like that. Great. And lit down here is something which we later want to change because you remember I can change the distance here and the insert and so on. And now we have to connect this somehow here in the whole tree. You can do it at every point. What I want to do is I want to add it here, for example. So we take here a connection. So we first do a merge. And here's the little trick. I don't know if I've explained it to you. So let's do that again. You select this node, you select this node, and hold down the Alt key. And if you drag them out here, you get a merge node, which connects these two, which maybe looks good. But if you really closely look, you see that maybe here is a little, yeah, you see a line. And the reason for this is, a merge node isn't a boolean or something like that. You only connect streams, but you still have two parts of a mesh. And the shading still sees that. In this shading mode, you maybe not see it, but if you later go here in the subdivision surface, you see it in the shading. So how to connect that? What you can do is you can work with the points. So let's do that. I go out of this go into the select mode and to the points and I demonstrate now the problem. If you take your select tool in the points mode and you tick this here or shift V, select the visible geometry only, you can drag here over this point here. And if you now hold down your left mouse button, you see in reality, these are two points. So we have two parts of the shell, this part here and the part which comes from here. To fuse them together, we use the fuse node. So if you add a fuse node here, you can fuse everything together. There's another node which people try to do, which is, um, I think I have to look it up. Polygon modeling, C, adjust, point weld. Yeah, point weld is an interactive tool which was added to Houdini. And it works like in Maya, for example, where you drag one point to the next one and you get a result of that. But this is not procedural. It's really that you have to do it by hand. So I use Fuse and Fuse uh, works procedural. You can have groups and so on. And I explained this node on my Houdini fundamentals training. So if you're interested in a complete introduction to Houdini over 18 hours, you can take a look into my Houdini fundamentals on Vimeo. But the easy answer is you take now the Fuse, go here and here you have your snap distance. And if you do that and now select these points here again, you will see that you only have one point left. So before that, we had all in all 491 points. And here we have only 463 points. So we have now fused these points together. You have to make sure that you have nowhere something in this snapping distance, but looks good for me. So I think we are done. Make a null object here. Say this is our caplet. Black. And yeah, now we have done this here. And I press Command B over my tree here. You can make it a little bit nicer if you have time for that. I do it really quickly here to bring this a little bit to the side. And now we have here the cup. And here the lid. And now we can merge these two together. I select both, drag them here. You see, you can connect everything. And if you have done that, you have now the complete cup here in your viewport. Go out of that, select the cup, go here to the render tab of the geometry container and say, show me again a subdivision surfaces of curves. And if you now deselect and deactivate here the smooth shaded with wires so that you see it here, that's the result. And I think it's really cool. It's procedural. And yeah, I hope you learned something again this week. 
My name is Helga Maus from Pixel Train. If you have fun with that, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. If you have questions, please write in the comments and spread the word. I'm really happy that you like this series so much. Have a good time. See you next week. Bye.